Spring has definitely sprung and the warm weather is really helping the fishing to improve. So if you like to fish offshore, head out to 200 or 300 feet of water and look for the weed lines. If you like to fish freshwater, then look for the shad flipping on the surface. Whatever it is you like, it's best to listen to the 411 here on the Texas Insider Fishing Report. Welcome to the Texas Insider Fishing Report. Presented by Yamaha. You're watching the Texas Insider Fishing Report with your favorite guides, hosts, and of course, captains. We hope everyone had a wonderful Mother's Day weekend on or off the water. And we can't wait to get you on the water this weekend because the reports are looking pretty promising, right, Rick? They do, Bree, and I did steal your spring has sprung from it's a couple okay. of weeks ago, but you know what? I like a lot of your ideas, Thanks. but more importantly, <laughs> we got a good show to do, and I'm really excited about some of the reports, but I don't want to tell anybody. No. They got to watch if they want to see it. a secret. All right, we'll wander on yonder to the workbench to say hi to Dave first before we get to our first guide. Hello, Dave. How you doing? We're going to be talking about tuna fishes. Tuna fishes. Tunas. Yeah, because, you know, springtime. If you sprung. get out there, if you get out there quickly before everybody else does and make them all go down, you can catch some. Catch some lunch catch some or tunas. dinner. All yep. right, well, Johnny Geis is waiting to take first place in the Upper Frost region, so let's hear what we can look forward to on Lake Fork and Hubbard Creek. Go for it, Johnny. Oh, hey, Bree, let's start off tonight with a good report on, uh, on Big Bass Lake Fork. They're, they're, they're doing it. The last wave of the spawn is just about over, but some bass are still hanging around the beds. We're starting to see pods of bass fry now, and the bass are chasing the brim away, protecting their babies. So if you're fishing along these weedy shorelines, uh, you may see a bass waking the water as they chase away the predators. This allows anger to pinpoint where that nest is and make a precise cast to the bass. Several baits are great at this time, like the hollow body frogs, the topwaters, and the plastic worms. Try to cast your lure past that bed and work it slowly close to the bass. Be sure to use braids, best line to use in the lily pads and heavy weeds because you'll need to horse fish out of the thick cover. We found some active bedding fish this week. Uh, they're hitting the frogs the way the stick bait's pretty good. And we also found some bedding bluegills and this also offers a great opportunity to catch bass on the frogs. Uh, big bass will be patrolling nearby the brim beds and they'll rush into the bed to chase the brim out. And that's when a hollow body frog works great fishing around these uh, beds in this heavy cover they're, they're bedded up in. Work the frog quickly through the beds with a walk the dog type retrieve. Be sure to wait a second or two when you get a strike till you feel that bass move away with the bait. That'll ensure a good hookup. Another good search lure for heavy covers a quarter ounce swim jig right now and a black and blue on fork with the green pumpkin trailer. This also imitates the small bluegills are feeding them. This is the time of year though we usually start out Hit the water about daybreak, we try to find a shad spawn going on. The thread fin and the gizzard shad, they spawn it right now at daybreak uh, around the shoreline cover, as well as some boat docks, and it doesn't take the bass long to find the shad, taking advantage of an easy meal of, of what's happening. So the top water lures and swim baits are the go-to lures on most days, but also keep a white weightless bass assassin tied on to quickly work through the spawning shads. Uh, some days the bass might not hit the top water too good, but they'll jump on that soft plastic bait right under the surface. Look for the white and gray cranes gathered around the windy points. They'll give away the shad spawn pretty quick and also the feeding bass. So when you ease up on an active scootle bass chasing the shad, make some long casts with a top water lure to reach the action. Try to stay as far away as possible. Try not to spook the bass and action may last a little bit longer. Usually this this bite only lasts a short while and then the bass move on out, but you can still catch them on the Carolina rig farther off the points. It'll be only a couple more weeks before the spawn activity is complete and my favorite time of the year begins. From about mid-May now to mid-July, Lake Fork produces the most big bass of the year. While the overall weight of these fork bass may be a little heavier during the pre-spawn and spawning season, the actual numbers of big fish increase during the summer months. The big bass school up, they move off these offshore long points humps, and they provide anglers plenty of action throughout this warm weather. Next week, I'll be reporting on several techniques that'll produce outstanding catches of big bass and usually provide anglers a chance at catching their personal best, so don't miss out on next week's report. 
Hey, uh, Striper Express sent in this picture of this 20 pound striper and what made it so special. Customer caught a fish on a topwater lure, it spooled all the line off. The guy happened to catch the line before it got through the eye and hand roped him in. Nice 20 pound striper from Texoma. Wow, that's a pretty oh. cool story. Go ahead, tell me about the other stuff. Hover Creek is a lake uh, one of viewers asked a, a report on, so we did that. And here's bass fishing on Hover Creek's fairly good right now. It's located near Breckenridge, Texas. It's a 15,000 acre lake, pretty good sized lake, provides some outstanding fishing in May and June months. I had a friend pre-fish for a tournament there this week and shared this report. Kevin now says the lake is producing a lot of bass in the three to seven foot of water on Texas rig rattlesnakes and weightless plastics like flukes and stick baits. The bass are holding around the salt cedar trees in the mid lake area, surface temps in about 65 in the morning to 70 in the afternoon. Fish are in all phases of the spawn over there. The better bites are where the water clarity is staying, mainly on the major feeder creeks. The main lake's clear right now. It's producing on top waters as well. You might find less fishing pressure on that lake. So good luck, Kevin, on your tournament this weekend. Here's a picture Kevin sent in of his brother Keith with a real good size Hubbard Creek. Hope they get it on the tournament. Fishing's heating up here in the upper press. The weather's warming up. It's a good time to get out and get on the water. We're gonna catch some big ones. All right, thank you so much, Johnny, for getting us started. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the Upper Fresh hotspots from Johnny's region. He says bass and crappie are finishing up their spawn. There are still enough fish in the shallows, but the bass will soon be moving into deeper areas. Top waters and soft plastics are working best for the bass, and then jigs and minnows are working best for the crappies. The striped fish, Guess what they're hitting? Slabs and swim baits in 20 to 30 feet of water, Bree. When I went fishing with Matt Cartwright yes. on Tawakini, Striper did the same thing to me. I had to catch my spool and reel him back in, but I didn't have to hand line him, but he almost spooled me. Dang. I know. And Let's it was go a, do some It of was that. a big one. It was super fun. Hurry up fun. and have that baby. Quit making that human. I would Let's love go. to. Come on. <laughs> All right. Next up is Matt Reed in the Lower Fresh region where there's always biggins to be caught. So let's see where they are this week on Lake Travis, Somerville, LBJ, Fayette, Choke Canyon, and, of course, Lake Falcon. Talk to us, Matt. All right. Let's get this thing started. We're going to kick off in the, in the Austin area. Uh, Brian Cot Cotter sent me some reports from, from those lakes around there. Lake Travis, <clears throat> fishing real well. Uh, you have to fish slow right now uh, with a shaky head, four inch worm or a Texas rig little four inch worm. Uh, it's catching 30 to 40 fish a day. But you do have to fish slow to get the bites. They're in three to 10 foot of water around the trees and shallow ledges. Uh, but you also get a bigger bite every now and then on a wake bait or a top water. Not gonna get many bites, but, but it might be that big one you're looking for. Moving on over to LBJ, uh, fishing around the docks, fished outside with a you know a small crankbait or a swim bait, and it's real important to skip a jig as far into that shade as you can. Uh, work it real slow. Uh, sometimes just let it soak and watch your line, just dead stick it. A lot of times they're laying under there and they pick it up and move off with it. Uh, there's also a shallow frog bite. Uh, that's so fun, just throwing it around any shallow color cover you can right up against the bulkheads or lay downs whatever any type of cover in the water you can find you might catch a big one on top Greg Boyk sent me a report from Somerville uh, lakes up about six inches uh, bass are in a post spawn phase and they're chasing bluegill up shallow uh, frogs and glide baits are doing the trick around the newly flooded brush Fayette County Fish the reeds and grass edges early with a swim jig or a belly weighted swim bait or chatter bait. Uh, after that, don't wait too long. Move on out. Uh, fish are in the deeper water uh, at 17 to 22 foot of water uh, on a Carolina rig stick bait, green pumpkin with gold glitter. The gold glitter has been real important. Uh, also catching some on a strike on a you know a deep running crank bait and shad patterns. Uh, a few fish starting to show up in the discharge there too. So you just get out on the deeper water. Uh, Greg had a had a hundred fish day this week, so that's an amazing fun day. Uh, Mike Bates sent me a report from Choke Canyon. Uh, so super shallow bite early uh, on moving moving baits and shad imitators and white. Also a Texas rig Cinco. Uh, 
And after that, you there's grass fish to be caught on a Texas rig and a square bill in that four to eight foot range. Um, there's also there's three real good bites going on over there. There's the, the deep bass are hitting deep crankbaits and Carolina rigs. Still no topwater bite. Uh, his numbers have been really good, and there's he's catching big ones in all three of those patterns. So you never know. Just just keep after it and uh, keep your line wet. Got a picture there. One of my customers with a, just an old South Texas special. Uh, Trey's got a big <laughs> smile on his face. That's a South Texas special. That works pretty good, bud. <laughs> Tell me about the crappies, uh, Matt. All right. The Lake Falcon crappie are thick in the man-made brush piles. They're in that 13 to 20 foot range. Uh, I want to use light line and eight ounce jig. Uh, June bug chartreuse or monkey milk are the best co color. Limits are common uh, and quick. You know, we can catch a two-man 50-piece limit on average in an hour and a half to two hours. Uh, also, like Somerville, the crop are biting really well on the standing timber and the brush piles. Again, they're using jigs and minnows over there to get the job done. That's just a picture of a live well, or you could call that a dinner well full of crappie there. <laughs> That's our place. That's always the benefit of the crappie is how good they eat. Wait, wait a minute. That boat well looks familiar to me, and I just want to know. I didn't see that well <laughs> dressed is. up like that. All right, thank you. Great report, <laughs> bub. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the Fiber Tech hotspots from the Lower Fresh region. My man says Fayette County Lake is on fire this week, guys. Start out early throwing swim jigs and chatterbaits on the edge of the reeds, and then as it gets later, move out to the points and the road beds in 17 to 22 feet of water to do the real damage. And the Carolina rig stick bait in green pumpkin with some gold glitter is gonna be the ticket breed. That's because you weren't looking for dinner, you were looking for that South Texas special. I know. And you found it. So I good did. job. It's I okay, did. you gotta pick one. You can't have both. I know, Too plus lucky. the Mexican food restaurant down there that he goes to. So good. We went so every good. night, it was so good. It had something different every night. It was just unbelievable. Well, lucky you. Mm -hmm. I wasn't invited. It's fine. <laughs> All right, coming up on the Texas Insider Fishing Report, we're seeing what's swimming around the Alvey Reels lower coast region. But first, Dave has some rigging and techniquing to do at the workbench. Some techniquing. Techniquing. We're do some of that. Sounds like a Japanese food of some sort. Tuna techniquing. That, that's one of my favorite things. But we're going to talk about how to catch them. Tuna techniques. Technakis. Tectentakis. <laughs> Something. We'll be back. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Fenwick. Bahio. Fresh eyes for a rich life. Garmin, plot your paradise. FiberTex, leaders in fiberglass fabrication and repair. Sportsman's Adventures, fishing for adventure. Penn, let the battle begin. And Skeeter Performance Fishing Boats, eat, sleep, fish. Yamaha's reputation for saltwater reliability is driven by the 4.2 liter V6 Offshore's 97% reliability and overall performance. Reimagined with new advantages like built-in digital electric steering for incredible responsiveness and exhaust rerouting for more powerful reverse thrust, the legacy of the reliable Yamaha 4.2 liter V6 continues, now more refined and capable than ever. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Pump up the performance in all of your engines. <laughs> into gear with StarTron. For the bay and beyond, team up with the best and rule the bay in a Skeeter. Proven with 20 consecutive NMMA Consumer Satisfaction Awards. And now through June 21st, you can launch into your summer with sizzling rebates of up to 2,500. Versatility, control, performance, and design. The Skeeter Summer Sizzling Savings Event is happening now through June 21st. Visit your local dealer or online at SkeeterBoats.com. Skeeter, it's more than just a boat, it's a lifestyle. 
Have you ever felt your heart pounding while feeling the power of a tarpon in the Florida Keys? Or experience the changing colors of a mahi as you bring it on board? Whether it's in the Bahamas, the Florida Keys, Guatemala, or the Florida Everglades, Murphy's Law Sports Fishing has the ability to guide you to the fish of a lifetime. To book your trip today, call 305-246-0673 or go to murphyslawsportfishing.com. Well, the workbench is where we talk about the rigs and techniques yes, every sir. week, Dave, and let's just get right into these tunas. Well, we're going to talk about tunas because, you know, the springtime is a good time to go tuna fishing because you're looking for those little weather windows and a whole, ain't a whole lot of people going out there and hit them hard yet. And there's yellowfin tunas out off the coast of Texas all year round. But, you know, during the winter, it's hard to get them. But, but although that's usually the best time to get them because that's when they bite the best, when the water's a little cooler than the hot summer. But they're there all year. But uh, now's a really good time to go and try to catch them. And, you know, there's several different ways. Um, most tuna trips, because you're having to go 100 miles at least, uh, usually to get to these rigs and floaters that hold most of these tuna fish. Um, you know, it's mostly an overnight trip. So a lot of guys will try to uh, time the trip to, to arrive at the rig right start at dusk. This is, you know, when it's starting to get dark because that's a great time to catch tunas. Dawn and dusk are great times because that's when they really like to bite. So if you can time your trip to get there right at dusk, you can start trolling around the rigs a little bit and see the tunas on the surface and try to find out where they're located. And you know, you're still some daylight left and you can catch a few fish out there, you know, before the, before it gets dark. And, you know, because at nighttime they get a lot less wary and all that bait gets up underneath the rigs with all the lights on and those tuna will, are much easier to get to come up in the water column. Mm -hmm. So one of the fastest and easiest ways to do it is, is use like a, a chunking outfit like a 50 pound outfit like this pen here with a hundred pound leader on it and a big live bait hook or a big trocar seven knot, something that's pretty st uh, sturdy hook. Right. Cause the fish you're gonna be hooking are between, you know, 50 to 120 pounds, even maybe bigger. Right. So there's gonna be a lot of pressure on that hook. So you want a hook that's pretty thick and, and can and withstand it. But the best thing to do is to get up, you know, down current uh, of the of the rig and start throwing out some chunks of bait. Usually a good bait is black fin tunas. Right. And the black fin tunas are there at night as well. And you know, if you can get get a little jig, a little king king jig like this, you know, something like that, you can catch all the little black fin tunas you want. Any little uh, spoon, uh, some kind of jig like that. And you catch those little black fin tunas and chop them up into like one inch chunks and then have somebody back there just feeding two or three chunks every minute or so, you know, making sure that everything is steady and you got mm -hmm. a good steady flow of chunks going. <clears throat> and then you can start floating baits back. And at nighttime, you can get away with 100 pound mono versus, you know, 60 pound fluoro or something like that during the day. Right. You, you can use a lot heavier tackle at night because the one thing about tuna fish is that their eyeballs are extremely good. They have really good eyes and color and everything else. So, you know, you got to be kind of, you know, cognizant of that when you're, when you're using any kind of baits for them. They're very, can be a lot, very size specific too. You know, especially when you're trolling and whatnot. Um, if you're using, if you, if, if you get there in the right at dusk and you see the fish out there feeding and they're feeding on little, little tiny things like, you know, like that maybe, like little tiny flying fish, and you come through there chugging with your ballyhoo and a big island lure, you're not gonna get a bite. Right. You know, you need to try to match, match what the they're hatch. eating, uh, especially tuna fishes, because they get, they get concentrated on this, whatever the bait is there, right. from little tiny flying fish to, to whatever, and they are on that size, and a lot of times it's hard to get them off of it. I mean, you can, you know, if you get way up in front, cause all, most of the time the biggest fish are gonna be way out in front of the school. Uh, if you see a school of tuna moving and you see birds in front, get in front of the birds because the, big, the biggest tunas are gonna be always leading the pack. And even if, if, even if you got dolphins and stuff out there behind them, always try to get way up in front. Don't go through the school because they'll go down. 
try to get outside of them, go all the way around to the front, set up your live baits or whatever in front, or drag your, you know, your baits or whatever. This is a, a deadly bait. It's a jig with a long black worm on it, even without any hair. That's one of Ray's, uh, you know, bucktails. But even without any hair, just the big long worm is a great tuna fishing lure. The R and R flare hawk. Yeah. <clears throat> there you go, Bree. That was some good tataki techniqueing. Yes. Right there. Good we job, ran out Bree. of time. We, <laughs> I did. I could have went we for went. a long All right. Time. The Alvey Reels Lower Coast Region has some fun inshore and offshore species to target this weekend. So let's get our captain, Chad Kinney, on the line to see what we'll be catching. Go for it, Chad. Well, we've got some good stuff inshore, uh, offshore. Inshore, we can go up around the Corpus Christi area, uh, Port Ramses, Ramses Pass. Talk to Doug Stanford, always helping us out here. Pirates of the Bay Charters, you keep some posts up there pretty good. So the redfish and the black drum are doing uh, really well with a few trout that are showing up. An occasional flounder there if you're working some of the deeper guts flowing off the flats now when the tide's starting to drop because we've got some pretty high tides there. So the redfish, even we talk about Port Manitoba all over, but even up there he's telling me the same thing. You know, the redfish are up shallow, one to two feet of water up in the East Flats area. Best results right there, he's using some shad throwing them into the potholes there, the sand pockets. You'll see a great, a green area with the, with the grass around it. Hit those pockets there. Best thing to do is kind of power pull down and throw your bait into the potholes and wait for the bite. Or you can drift them and target those potholes as you're drifting, let it sit through there and keep on moving through. In the same area, but out deeper, if you want to try for some uh, black drum, fish bites have been working really well. Uh, go a little heavier jig head, go to a half ounce to three quarter ounce jig head and uh, hit that fish bites on the bottom there, working good. Uh, dead shrimp works also really well. Uh, if you're using the shrimp, a uh, little trick is, I mentioned before, is you can kind of like pinch the head off and peel some of the shell off, get some more of the scent in the water. That helps out. And the trout are starting to show up, uh, starting to show up around Dagger Island, a uh, live shrimp and popping cork, and some free line croaker uh, out there starting to pick up some, some of the trout there. So we got a picture of him on one of his charters there with Doug showing me, you know, the redfish and the black drum combo there from the East Flats. Moving over to the flounder. Flounder fishing, you know, guys, I ask, lots of people ask me all the time, I love flounder fishing, but usually it's a slow, methodical grind that's rewarding if you've got the patience, you know. So it's not a huge flounder bite going on, but it is a lot of fun. So you got to concentrate in some of these tournaments, people are fishing, you know, you got to catch one to win. So what you want to look for is some of the deeper guts that are flowing off the flats into the ICW or into a base system. So the tides, like I mentioned, they're a little bit higher, but they're starting to really drop off. And the best, best time to target these things is, is right now. So get a quarter ounce to a half ounce jig head. Uh, you can put a fish bite fight club on there. It's scented, uh, work it, bounce it really off the bottom real slow. If you're into live bait, you know, live real small finger mullet or mud minnows if they're available, you can try that also. Just make sure you work the edges of all those guts and repeat it constantly. You might cast two, three, four times in that one area and you're like, well, it's not hitting, but as soon as you get that thump, you're gonna get it, set the hook, and then keep his head in the water and use a landing net for the best uh, best sh uh, shot there. So got a picture here you can see little guts in the background there and the scb boats by shallow sport made there they're fishing on a flat with the water coming off like i'm talking about my flounder so nice. moving over to offshore state water remains really good um in target you know the numbers of fish i uh, tried deeper for some wahoo uh deeper rigs weed lines are actually you see a lot of sorgasm stuff going out there so they're starting to get really to form up when the blue water hits it's going to really turn on really good so right now the red snapper open year-round state waters in Texas. Federal waters can be open up here in June 1st. Uh, so in state waters, you're allowed four per person, 15 inch minimum. Current in the sea is actually subsiding, which helps a bunch. Even the current helps a lot more than that. So the last trip we went out, I'll show you a picture in here a bit. We were on an X3 shallow sport, took the wires out, took off, ran out, went left at one o'clock, got back at four. Uh, we wound up with a good limited snapper and we were jigging with a one ounce to two ounce eagle claw jig uh, with a trocar hook. Um, and if you want to, out the back, I was fishing the back end off just a free line Eagle Claw 12 out and put a little piece of shad or squid on the back end of it and free fall it. Just keep on it free fall until you get a bite. Uh, some of those bigger fish are suspended. Uh, great way to target them. So got a nice little limited snapper there for dinner we had had there. Moving to Wahoo um, and offshore and some weed lines. Weed lines are showing up, like I mentioned. Uh, they're cons they haven't been real consistent for several seasons, but they're starting to show up. And it's really going to be good, I think, this year. So. Look for that blue water. So when it pushes in, I'll let you know exactly where and when, how. Uh, but there's been a few spotted out there. I've been talking to my buddies from Port A down to South Padre and myself, three to 400 feet, which are holding some Wahoo, troll three to five lines. Hold some Islanders rigged with Ballyhoo. Works really, really good in that. Make sure you use a wire leader. 
And for the reels, I like using a pen torque 30 up to an international 50 wide, depending on how what size fish you think you're targeting, but that 30 to 50 will cover anything. Uh, spool them up with some good uh, Momoi mono if you like to. That helps, I uh, think, a lot with the uh, shock when you initially hit it. And if you're using a smaller reel, go ahead and back it up with some diamond braid. Um, and that will really, that mono, even a shock leader on top, will give you a good stretch for when we'll pull that hooks on the side of the mouth there. All right, thank you so much, Chad. Great report from the Alvey Lower Coast region. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the shallow sport boats hotspots. Chad says that in shore, Corpus Christi area has been good for redfish and some black drum in the deeper water using those fish bites. And then offshore, out of the lower coast, state water snapper remains good with some weed lines starting to form out deeper, holding some of the wahoos. So eight weeks and I have to look at this truck every show and know that it's gonna go to somebody else. I know. And here is your weekly reminder what that if I think? <laughs> what were you thinking? If you would like a chance to win this exact 1952 Chevy 3100 hot rod, all you have to do is purchase raffle tickets at ccaflorida.org forward slash hot rod and then send Captain Rick Murphy a thank you card. <laughs> you don't even have to do <laughs> no. that. No. Let's all call meet. me on the phone. Just call him and say thanks. That's it. Let's all meet in the middle when we return and see what's biting in the Garmin Middle Coast and Star Tron Middle Fresh regions. And remember to keep up with everything fishing in Texas. Make sure to head on over to our website, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and to see new fishing adventures along with reports, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Captain Rick Murphy. See you soon. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Contender Boats, always in the game. Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin, the best lures, period. Alvy Reels, a better way to fish. Berkeley, your fish, our science. Murphy's Law Sport Fishing, book your trip today at murphyslawsportfishing.com. And Penn, let the battle begin. The Yamaha VMAX V6 SHO continues to deliver the level of performance that pro bass and multi-species anglers demand. Underneath a bold and aggressive new look, an upgraded charging system with 40% more charging power meets the amped up demand for today's advanced electronics. The VMAX SHO, raw power, reliability, and exhilarating performance for every angler who loves the sport enough to invest in the best. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. We are the Fish Bites Nation, and this is your invitation. So grab some fish bites and get busy casting, because you can't join the nation without doing the catching. Ask for Fish Bites or Fish Bites Fight Club lures, or visit fishbites.com. Today's power pole tip is about the Charge Marine Power Station. In the previous video, we showed you how to set up the charge and let it know what type of batteries you're working with for your trolling motor and your engine battery. Today, I wanna to dive into how to connect, control, and customize what your charge is doing throughout the day. Let's say I know I'm gonna go fish real hard in the current and use my trolling motor a lot. I can get into the Sea Monster app and tell the charger to focus more of the engine priority on my trolling motor batteries as we're running around all day. But now let's switch it up. It's a nice weekend. I've got the wife and the kids. We're gonna go out to the island and hang out. I'm gonna move that priority over to the engine. 
And what I've done, I've tied my trolling motor batteries back to the engine battery so I have a real big source of power for all the speakers, the stereo, the large amps. And that way when we go to leave, I won't have too little of power to start the outboard. The powerful charge, customize, control, connect, that's your tip of the week. You know, Bree, being able to monitor exactly what the charge is doing or your power pulls doing through an app on your phone, that's a game so changer. Easy. Yeah. You know, and I it mean, really is. I can tell the amount of my batteries have what storage they have as well as what they need. And I'd be able to manipulate whether I want to charge the engine battery or the trolling motor batteries running from spot to spot and all through an app. Cool, man. Yeah, you don't have to worry about it. There's nope. enough to worry about when you're in a boat, you know? Exactly. It take, takes that away. We need charges. I mean, we have energy drinks. Our phone has extra batteries. Exactly. So we all need that. Exactly. All right, the seasons are definitely starting to change in the Garmin Middle Coast region. And our captain, Bink Grimes, has all the updates you're going to need. So let's listen in. Go ahead, Bink. Yeah, that summer pattern for trout is developing with the highs uh, in the upper 80s and nighttime temps in the high 60s. Uh, we're waiting for trout over sand and grass and working flats near passes and other uh, strong tidal flow locales. It's kind of been the ticket around here. Uh, the drifters in East Matagorda Bay have had a tough time with the winds, but those willing to grind at least uh, one big fish a day have, have been rewarded. Waders in East Bay uh, have had a tough time on a consistent bite even with the live bait, the fluctuations in the water temperatures and the rainfall seems to, uh, you know, determine when, when the bite is uh, during the best part of the day. Be better fish have come in uh, West Matagorda Bay for waders. There's a lot of, a lot of little glass minnows on the shorelines and, sm and smaller topwaters and soft plastic have worked well. The same in Port O'Connor, they're working the flats adjacent to Pascoville. Water levels have been higher than normal in the morning due to the persistent low pressure uh, from storms out in the Gulf. Lots of shrimp, shad, pogies, and small minnows are riding the tide, and slicks are popping up uh, where the fish are feeding. Deep reefs in West Matagorda Bay have been really, really good lately uh, on live shrimp around the barge, Coon Island, Half Moon Reef around Palashes. Recent rains, they, they freshened up the small rivers and tributaries that are up on the upper end of the, uh, of the watershed, and it's pushed a lot of those fish uh, out into the into the middle of the bay because we, we had been in a drought condition and, and all those tributaries had been real real salty and what it did it pushed them right back out in the bay then at rockport and port aransas uh mud island super flat to be good on those uh, berkeley jaywalker top waters they've been really really good sand and grass humps around st joe island have also been good on those same baits photo there trout uh we found at about six foot of water near palacious had a really, really good bite over that deep shell of five or six foot of water this this week. Redfish in Matagorda, a uh, guide, Michael Roff, he's uh, saved many windy days this week chasing reds in the back sloughs and bows on the south shoreline. He's been working Maverick Bow, Hidden Bow, Green Island, and Piling Slough, uh, and little clusters of shell on the shoreline, and each holds uh, that clean water, and it's holding a lot of uh, bait right now. There's just a ton and ton of glass minnows on the south shoreline of West Matagorda Bay, which is something we really look forward to every year. In Freeport, Matagorda, Port O'Connor, and the Port Aransas jetty, been holding redfish. Uh, there's lots of white shrimp on the beachfront, and uh, man, those uh, those redfish are, are teeing off on those big old white shrimp. Captain uh, Kendall Kirsch, he's been working the Matagorda jetty for limits of redfish on crankbaits, eight to 12 foot of water. Got Rhett Price, he's been uh, working the reds in Rockport, Port Aransas. Uh, on the flats and the back lakes with the high tides. Uh, they've been able to fish the afternoons until dark, and those redfish are moving shallow uh, with the tide. They're eating those small glass minnows there as well. Many back lakes are fresh right now uh, from the recent rains, and what it's been doing, it's been pushing uh, a lot of those fish to the mouth of the slough, and, uh, and really people have been waiting there and intercepting them. Uh, offshore, Dorado, uh, you know, guide Michael Quebec has said the Dorado being good while trolling the rips about 60 miles out, and, uh, 250 to 300 foot of water. There's a lot of weed lines and grass lines, and he's working that same pattern also for a few wahoo that's showing up to 30 pounds. Uh, nighttime swords have been good drifting in the hilltops and domes. Most of those fish have been in the 100 plus range, about 80 miles out. Uh, and a few yellow fins are showing as well. Uh, about 110 to 120 miles out. In Port Aransas, uh, a lot of state record, uh, I'm sorry, state caught uh, red snapper and kingfish. 
Uh, same Wahoo and Amber Jacks are starting to show as well. Water temps have been edging closer to that 80 degree mark in the Gulf, which kind of sets us on a, uh, a summer pattern. So uh, we're really looking forward to that. And that's really all uh, we have for the Garmin Middle Coast region. Uh, be courteous on the water and uh, please consider catch and release uh, for the betterment of our fishery. And I want to echo that power pole charge is awesome. All right. Thank say that. I mean, I use it all the time. All right. Thank you so much, Bink. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the mirror lure hotspots from the Middle Coast region. Bink says that the trout are good around Palacios at Coon Island on live shrimp. Redfish action has been good on the, in the mouths of the back lakes uh, on the mirror lure Little Johns and Bass Assassins. All right. The Startron Middle Fresh region has a lot to talk about this week. So let's get Matt Losher on the line and see what Toledo Bend and Richland Chambers has going on. Talk to us, Matt. All right, Bree. Yeah, we got a whole lot going on right now over here. Fishing's kind of all over the place. I'm going to start with bass fishing on Toledo Bend this week. Uh, like I said, there's a lot going on. We've got the Sealy Big Bass Splash Tournament happening this coming week. Uh, so it's a great event for weekend fishermen. If you aren't signed up for that one, you should definitely jump in it. It's a really fun tournament where anybody has a legitimate shot at winning substantial cash and prizes. They give away a ton of money at that event. Um, and then there's also a lot going on uh, on Toledo Bend as far as fishing as well. You know, our lake is well known for its big size and its diversity. And with the lake over full pool level right now from all the recent rain, it's definitely showing that diversity. So my best advice for all you guys this week is to just fish your strength because the fishing is all over the board. So whatever you prefer to fish, if it's shallow, you can do that. If it's deep, you can do that. Up shallow, my go-tos are going to be the Bass Assassin Boss Shiner Swim Bait or a Frog or even that Bass Assassin Fat Job or the Double X Fat Job is great as well, especially for catching a big fish. All three of those baits will catch a big one around the shallow coast. And then if you like to do the offshore structure fishing type of stuff, my number one choice there will be a big crankbait, something that dives down in that 12, 20 foot range. And you're gonna wanna follow that crankbait up with a 10 inch worm in a plum color and you'll be in business on the offshore bite. Then even more uh, stuff going on, we've still got a shad spawn happening. So uh, keep your eye open for that early morning bonus bite on that shad spawn. You can find them spawning around the docks or any little bit of grass you can find or rock. Uh, but once the sun gets up, that deal's over, so start early for that. I hope that helps you guys win big this week, so good luck to everybody fishing that Sealy event. Next, I'm going to move over to Richland Chambers. My buddy, Mr. Thurman Selman, up there with Bass the Specialty Guide Service, uh, has given me a report this week. He says that the water temp up there has reached the 70-degree range now, and he is not seeing fish on beds anymore. So it sounds like they're pretty much all done. They're moving into a full-blown post-spawn pattern. And he mentioned that the shad have begun spawning there as well. Uh, so look for the bass spawning on the, uh, or the, I'm sorry, the shad rather, spawning and the bass feeding on them early in the morning. He also mentioned that there's a lot of these post-spawn fish are now hanging out around the dock in about four foot of water. And he's catching those on shaky heads uh, with about an eight inch worm on there. And then square bill crankbaits are good for that pattern as well. Now moving on down southwest there a little bit, Mr. Jared Poole with Hill Country Hammer Guide Service got me a report from LBJ, and he said that the bass there are mostly post spawn. That's how they're catching most of their numbers, but they have found a few fish still on beds up the Colorado River arm of that lake. And uh, he sent me a photo to showcase uh, what they found up there, still sitting on the beds. And here we go with another 10-pounder coming out of Hill Country Hammer Guide Service, man. These guys are catching some big ones. Uh, that's a 10.3 there, caught by Ryan, and uh, I think that was his personal best, so congrats to Ryan on that one. Yeah. Now, the uh, post spawn fish, Jared says, those are out on the points and the ledges, and they're throwing jigs and deep diving crank, uh, crankbaits to catch those. And then they're also catching a few up shallow on frogs and swim jigs. Once again, just kind of all over the board. Go fish your strength. I think you'll have fun down there at LBJ. Now, switching over to crappie. I'm going to roll the Toledo Bend and the Sam Rayburn crappie report into one again this week because they're just so similar right now. You know, we've got more and more of those big slab crappie making their way out of the spawning flats and out on the points to this standing timber in that 15 to 28 foot of water. And they're feeding heavy, man. They're hungry right now. 
minnows and the panfish assassin jigs are both working really well for catching them. I love that jig bite this time of the year, catching those big ones. And I got another photo here for you of the Juge family uh, with a table full of crappie they caught with me just a few days ago. We had a great time that day. Nice. And lastly, uh, Mr. Thurman also filled me in on the crappie report at Richland Chambers. He said the crappie there are making their way out to the docks with brush around them. So a lot of good stuff going on. You guys go get them. Good report. Thank you so much, Matt. We're going to go and take a look at the Middle Fresh hotspots from the Middle Fresh Startron region. Matt says that we're gonna actually go look for the bass. They're all over the board, biting shallow and deep on moving baits. The crappie are gathering in deep summer time areas, biting minnows and jigs. All right, something exciting coming up. Make sure y'all tune in to Diamond Fishing Products, May 17th on Instagram Live as Captain Rick Murphy is discussing leaders for tarpon fishing and offshore snapper fishing. He's giving up his secrets and you definitely won't want to miss it. Well, you know, it's just those leader, the, it's important. the way we put the leaders together is yes. the key. Yes, of course. So, so that's it's why all we decided. The, the presentation. Oh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'll be tuning in for sure. Okay. I'll be harding it for you. All right. All right. <laughs> We've got one more captain waiting for us in the Fish Bites Upper Coast region, but first Dave is waiting at the workbench to show off some new products. What's the loot looking like, Dave? Good loot. Good, good loot. loot. Especially some nice AFCO shorts. Ooh. I like the AFCO stuff. Very nice. A little looty for the booty. Very, yes, exactly. We'll <laughs> looty for the booty. <laughs> the Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Ameritrail. Load, launch, relax. Fenwick. Turn on the bite anytime. Tie on a mirror lure. Diamond Fishing Products. Our reputation is on the line. R&R &R Tackle. From our tackle box to yours. Berkeley. Your fish, our science. And StarTron, cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all-new Yamaha V8 XTO Offshore. With over 100 years of heritage, Alvi Sidecast Reels allow you to cast over 150 yards with up to 900 yards of capacity. Alvi's state-of-the-art drag and 22-inch retrieve rate per wine is perfect for any surf challenge. Alvi Reels are manufactured to best practice standards and are in fact so robust that the Alvi also comes with a 10-year salt and sand warranty. For more information, go to alviusus.com. So Dave, you know, each week we talk about new products yes, as well we as the rigs and techniques here at your workbench. <laughs> so you know, Dave. I get to take this home with me when the show's over, right? It's yeah, of yeah, course. Okay. If cool. that's what you wish, you can load it into the truck by yourself. <laughs> Not my truck. Which will be in her. No, oh, yeah. truck ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <coughs> Guy told me it was a boat anchor the other day. Anyway, Pin Fierce 3 is what we're looking at first. It's a really good little reel. Uh, it's good. For, it's a good starter reel. It's a good starter size. It's a 2,500 size, uh, perfect for trout and redfish and flounders and uh, catching pinfish. Just about everything. You know, it's got a nice heavy bale on it. 
uh, 6.2 to 1 retrieve, 240 yards of 10 pound it'll hold, so a 10 pound braid, and uh, 160 yards of 20 pounds. So, yep. you know, it's, it holds plenty of line. And it's got a full metal body with the side plates as well, so everything stays where it's supposed to be and the gears stay aligned, even under, you know, heavy pressure when you're pulling in something good size. Uh, it's got a techno balance rotor, so it's really smooth. You know, uh, it's got a nice spool with the line ca capacity on it. Yeah, you so can you can see tell how much here. line you're putting on there. It's got a nice it little uh, rubber stop on the back, so when you put your braid on there, it won't slide around. Right. Your, you know, That's pretty. what that is. Yeah, yeah. very cool. HT100 carbon fiber drag, same drag that goes in a Penn International. Just so, littler. Yep, yeah, just smaller little drag washers, exactly. And, um, you know, Again, heavy duty, he that heavy duty bail wire. So you, you know, if you do give it to a kid, it's probably not going to get smashed up. Right. You know, so. Absolutely. So what do we got here from R and R tackle? Well, this is a tuna magnet. Seeing as how we were talking a little bit about tunas today, and I was talking about the size, you know, uh, how they can be size specific. You know, these are Ray Rocher's uh, tuna magnets, and you know, shows you how big. They're not that big a lure. They don't have to be. Uh, you know, you can catch a 50, 60 pound tuna on that rig. It's, you know, it's made for smaller tunas, but big tunas will eat that. Uh, that's got a 60 pound leader in it, uh, uh, must add hook. It's, uh, you know, perfect for school tunas. Um, Double crimped? Always, you know, if you're gonna put crimps, always put two. That, uh, that way you don't have to worry about them because they won't come off if you put two. It comes in six colors, pink and white, blue and white, green and yellow. Black and red, black and purple, which is what I really like, and the clear and clear, which is another clear good and thing. clear. Yeah, exactly. Just so you can be clear. It's just to be clear. All right, exactly. And these, these are, are definitely some... not my. No, those are mine. Aftco packed fishing Whoa. shorts, lightweight, extremely durable, quick drying, moisture wicking. They've got two plier pockets. Two. On, two on one side. They got these big cargo uh, uh, pockets as well. Uh, 80 per, 88 percent nylon and 12 percent elastine so it, 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 they really they have the four-way stretch so they're, they're very comfortable this is a new fastening thing they've got on there it's called the block tapey and it's like a it's not you know the other guys it's it's good stuff it, it, it won't it won't deteriorate over time like some of that other stuff I like will. the black the back plot pockets really have some really yeah, nice they got zipper, zipper pockets on the backs really good ni yeah. nice ones 20 21. Uh, inch on the outer seam and 10, 10 inch in the inseams. You know, they're nice long shorts that hang down to your knee. How many different colors do you know? Three colors, khaki black and uh, slate blue. Slate blue. Yeah, slate blue, which is I really like. Act and fit, you know, and when you say, you know, it's a, the modern size, true to the size. So if you say you're a, as big as I am. So pinfishing.com, rnrtackle.com, afco.com. Correct. All right, last but not least. Yep, we got the TH Marine Wave Away. It's a, what it, it's made for is to clean your screens, all your screens on the boat. If you have a tablet or a laptop or, you know, even your sonar, your phone, any kind of electronic screen that you've got, this is what you need because it won't hurt any of your units. It won't bleed off. Um, it's good for sunglasses as well. It's alcohol free. Uh, you know, it cleans hard water spots. It's ammonia free. It doesn't drip all over the place. When you spray it, it stays. It's right. really small. It comes with that little 1.5 ounces of solution in there and a 9.9, 9, 9 by 9 fiber cloth, 9 inches by 9 right. inches fiber cloth, and a little bag, a drawstring bag to take it and carry it around with. Yeah. And you go to TH Marine and got it. You can do it with THMarine.com. Exactly. THMarine.com to right. get that and keep your stuff clean. Hi, Brie. Everybody's always touching stuff now. It's true. Yeah, And we like screens. to keep all those fingerprints off of our yeah, stuff. I get yeah. it. I get it. All right. With flounder, redfish, blackfin, and snapper rumors, how could this weekend get any better in the Fish Bites Upper Coast region? Let's get our Captain Carl Weston on the line and tell us how and where we're catching the fun. Go for it, Carl. Hey, guys. Yeah, the, the flounder bite in Trinity Bay is staying steady along the rocks right now. We've been throwing a live bait rig. That might be your best bet right now to stay with that. Small finger mullet, mud, mud minnows have been money. Now pick it up, you make that short run to the Texas City Dyke. That's also a great chance, uh, choice for the day of fishing. The flounder over there picking up. Uh, they're feeding along the jetties and the rock pile. As the tides go, the incoming tides produce a little better than the outgoing. And if artificial is your bag, 
a white bass assassin three inch sea shad on a half inch jig head will get those flatties attentions right now uh you got to be quick on the trigger though because these fish are great little bait robbers we have a picture of a few laid out on the boat today nice. now the reds are guys the reds are going like crazy inshore and all along the jetties the water's warming up with these longer days the cold fronts are becoming a lot less frequent yeah, well, let me say that now on the upper coast, we'll get hit with a cold front in a couple of days, yeah. but the, the bait is also becoming easier to catch, and this is just a recipe for success for us. The big fish are still running shad along the nearshore structures and along the channel edges. The smaller slot red can be targeted almost anywhere that you see bait. Hard bait can be a ton of fun right now. The Berkeley Flicker Minnow in Chrome is my favorite of the week. And we have a picture today with Shannon with a nice red fish. All so, right. running offshore, guys, like you said, the tuna bite is in full swing out the floaters and deep water structure. Uh, this looks like it's going to be a good year with all the bait we're seeing so early. Uh, so, chasing pelagic should be a lot of fun in the upper coast. Good sized hardtails are schooling up around the wrecks and the, and the rock piles. We're seeing sad from the beach all the way out to the eight mile mark. The old Sergeant Oil Rig, they're, they're holding good bait too. Greenbacks, little hardtails. Now when you're fishing for tuna around these deep water rigs, it can get fast and furious. Chumming these footballs up to the boat can be tricky, but once you get them close, it can be kind of a bucket list day for sure. And here we have a picture of Tosh with a beautiful black fin today. Woo! Nice. All right, one oh, more to go, that's bub. That's a cool picture. It is cool. Let's start talk about vermilion snapper uh, these guys you know with red snapper season still a month away here's your fun replacement vermilion they're known as beeliners here in the upper coast these tasty little guys are a blast to catch you can run a double rig catch two at a time you keep a lot more of them and most underwater spots that hold red snapper also hold beeliners these fish sometimes will hover over a school of red and appear on your garment as though it's bait but don't be fooled just drop a rig with a little smaller bait, a little smaller hook, staying within 10 to 20 feet of the bottom. I think you might be surprised at what you'll reel up to a boat. Another trick to finding these little fish is keeping them on the outside of the structure in the rock piles. The beeliners are not as aggressive as the red snapper, so they'll stay on the outside and school that way. And today, Rick, we got a picture of a pile of them on the dock ready for some fish tacos. All right, so Ooh. I got a couple questions for you. If the bee liners and the red snappers are hanging out, they're in the same place, give me your go-to 100% trick to make sure that you're catching them because you don't want to catch the red snappers because they're not in season. So what do you do differently? Smaller bait, artificial bait? What are you doing differently, Carl? No, I go to a very small hook, like a two-aught gold eagle claw hook. And what I do is I cut the, the uh, squid in strips and actually fold it up and put it on the hook. It looks like a small chiclet. <laughs> and that seems, that's a little trick and it really works. That's good. All right, second question I have for you. I know you and Natasha are coming here to be on the show. I may think that's next week sometime. So we're gonna be fishing together. What do you wanna catch? What's on your bucket list and what's on hers? Wow, you guys have so much stuff to catch down there that we don't have in Texas. Um, never caught a permit, uh, never caught a bonefish, never caught a tarpon. Uh, All right, so it sounds like we're gonna go permit fishing with a sidebar of snook and tarpon. How's that work? <laughs> that would that would be my bucket list for the day, boss. <laughs> All right, well tell Natasha to send me a text on what's on her list. We're gonna go, I gotta read the hot spots from the R&R &R Upper Coast uh, hot spots. Carl says that inshore, the flounder, they're pinching, uh, are pitching finger mullet on live bait rigs along the rock jetties. And then offshore, the blackfin tuna's chumming, cut sardines around the deep water rigs. That's gonna be a fun day of fishing. You wanna go with us? Um, I would love to. But? But, <laughs> it's okay. My we'll belly I want you to know. My, my belly I travels. want you to know that you're messing up our fishing. Hurry up and get out of there. Oh, 
You know what? You keep saying that. No one wants that more than me. So, what do you think is on Natasha's bucket list to catch? Oh, I bet Natasha's going to want to catch a tarpon and probably a big probably snook. right. She's all about the pull. You know what I mean? She likes to get in there and get. Yeah, you can see how lit up she was about catching that yellowfin. You know? Yeah. So. That'll be a fun day. It will be fun. I'm jealous. And then they'll be in. And then they'll be in, in the, the studio. studio with so us. it'll be cool. That'll be my f first time meeting Carl. Oh yeah. And Natasha. Yeah. I was supposed so to fish what, that tournament with them last week or uh, last year. So what did you get week. for Mother's Day? How was it? Mama? Mother's Day was great. Yeah. 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 I That's got love it? from my daughter. That's it. Yeah. I got stung by a paper wasp. <laughs> and a flood. You did. Where'd you get stung? in my new kitchen. Yeah, it was an inner stung. thigh. Oh. Inner thigh. Really high on the inner thigh. Ew. Right oh. Right. Oh. Wasp. <laughs> yeah. And then he ran through the house butt naked. Yep. But my dad laughing at me. Didn't that would have been a was. great gift for me to yeah. see on Mother's yes. Day. Yes, what a dolphin. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. Make sure you tune in next week. Thank Carl Weston one. from the Fish Bites Upper Coast region is going to be here, along with Tasha. It's going to be a fun, fun week. We'll have week. a fun time. But I hope you guys have fun out on the water this weekend catching all those fishes. Thanks. That's a good one. Freaking out. No, about Dash's bucket list. George oh, yeah. goes. <laughs> oh, like, no way. Like, so when I asked you, I was like, Jerry, <laughs> like, what do you think's on the job? And then